Good evening. Can you hear me now? Sorry, we're having, we have three microphones tonight. Sinclair has made a name for itself in England and all over the world as a company that has taken ideas and miniaturized them into very small spaces. In the mid-1970s, they pioneered the development of pocket calculators. In 1980, they introduced the first doorstop-sized personal computer. Uh, last year, they introduced one of the first uh, flat-screen pocket television sets, and tonight, they're introducing officially in the uh, uh, continental United States and uh, Canada and the, the rest of the uh, continent, the uh, Sinclair QL, which is uh, equally a milestone. Uh, it continues a trend that began earlier this year when uh, Apple introduced, uh, in fact, officially for the public at the Boston Computer Society, the Macintosh, a new uh, niche of personal computer that is really too powerful to be called a home computer, yet in a price range and size that wouldn't really uh, consider it to be a business system. And it's a development that uh, is really quite exciting that's bringing a new degree of power and versatility to the home user, which uh, we're very happy to present to you tonight. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you a longtime friend of the BCS, the managing director of Sinclair from Cambridge, England, Nigel Searle. Thank you very much. Will you um, raise your hands or yell if you can't hear me? You're having difficulty hearing me? How did you know to raise your hands? <laughs> Is that better? Yeah? Thanks very much, Jonathan. It's um, a real pleasure to be here in Boston and to be invited by the BCS to present the QL for the first time in public in America. Um, I was going to begin by telling you what the QL was, but um, Jonathan's done that for me. It's a computer with the power of a business machine, but at the price of a home computer, one that is affordable by the consumer. Um, I'd like to start with a few slides. Slides? <laughs> the QL. Um, Life-size QL. The original concept of the QL was developed in late 1982. Um, and it was originally intended to be something quite different from what we wound up with. We had launched earlier in 1982, outside the USA, a computer called the Spectrum, which we've since sold one and a half million of. We'd also announced in 82, although we didn't deliver until early in 83, our own proprietary mass storage system called the microdrive, which is an endless loop tape system. It uses small cartridges like this, each of which contains 100K bytes of program and data. It's a random access device so that it, um, you can access files on it and so on in the same way that a disk is used. Very low cost, very compact, very light. And we'd also been working for quite a long time on a pocket television set, which we finally launched late last year. And the original concept of the new computer when we started to design it in late 1982 was to take the Spectrum, to take two of the micro drives, and to take a modification of the flat cathode ray tube that's in the television and to bundle them into a single portable machine. But things got changed a little along the way, um, and we decided not to make it simply a spectrum. We decided to use a more powerful processor and to give the machine more memory than the Z80 of the spectrum would easily support. So that's the way the QL ended up. 
And one of the few things that it had in common with the original intention of the design was the two built-in micro drives. It uses a member of the 68,000 microprocessor family, the 68,008. Um, that was a major decision for us to make. I think it guarantees that the QL will have a long life because the 68,000 family, I'm sure, is here to stay. And at its upper end with the 68,020 is an extremely powerful processor. That's what the inside of the machine looks like. Um, in addition to the 68,000, there's an Intel 8049 processor. The two micro drives are on the lower right of that photograph. And there's 128K of memory, of random access memory, of which 32K is used by the display and about 5 or 6K by the operating system, leaving over 90K completely free for the user. On the left of the printed circuit board, but still inside the case, you can see the um, expansion bus onto which can be added um, various peripherals and a half megabyte expansion memory. This shows the back of the machine. Um, it drives a television set or an RGB monitor. It has two RS-232s built in. It has joystick ports. It has a solid state ROM cartridge slot. It has two RS-232s, did I cover those? And it has a local area network built in. That shows how the half megabyte memory expansion plugs into this side of the machine and extends slightly beyond the machine. The, um, it has an external power supply. The machine comes with micro drive cartridges in these wallets. A very comprehensive user manual, although as I hope to show you, um, not a very necessary manual because the machine is so very easy to use. In the read-only memory, 48K, it has an operating system and a version of BASIC, which we call Super BASIC. It's um, a highly structured language in which you write procedures normally. You can use go-tos and go-subs and so on, as in ordinary BASIC, but you don't have to. It's a much more powerful language. The user interface with the operating system at the command level is also an integral part of the super basic. And in one of the applications, as you'll see, the database program, again, the interface is part of the basic. Um, we're going to take a look now at some of the features of the machine actually running in a demonstration program on the machine. So could we switch from the slides to the screen? Um, and if I can explain what is happening here, there are actually four totally independent programs running simultaneously on the screen. The main part of the screen um, is a basic program. There are two programs running the Sinclair logo at the bottom of the screen, and there's a third machine code program, those are machine code programs, there's a third one which is running a real-time clock. Um, I think apart from those three tasks at the bottom, and in some of the um, further part of this demo, you'll see the Sinclair <laughs> name continuing, but otherwise I think everything in this demo is written in basic rather than in machine code. So um, we can see a bit of action. Um, this illustrates the um, color capability of the machine. Um, 
The resolution is 512 by 256 with four colors, or 256 by 256 pixels with eight colors. Um, sorry, yes, with eight colors. Can we continue? Um, some of the features I've mentioned already, powerful Sinclair Super Basic, high resolution color graphics. It's got um, full travel 65 key keyboard. Sinclair has been rather famous for flat keyboards and one keyboard that was described as feeling exactly like dead human flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know whether that was true, but I tried, and it was. Um, multitasking operating system, our own operating system, um, built-in network and RS-232. I think everything else there I, I've covered already. OK, so can we go on? Um, this shows how you can create, or shows that you can create Windows in BASIC um, there are three windows here, a square one, a long one, and uh, a tall one. And um, you can move, you can write text into those windows, and you can move text within those windows independently, and they each serve as, act as if they were totally separate screens, so that when the text is moved off the edges of them, they disappear. All these <coughs> wonderful features, I promise you, can be used to do useful things. <laughs> um, this shows some of the richness of the super basic language. Um, so that you have a if then else end if type structure. Those of you who are familiar with um, high level languages will appreciate some of this. Repeat. Select on for the the for statement is I think very readily appreciated that you can write a statement of the type for i equals three seven fifteen to twenty five steps of two forty five just a long list of the values and groups of values that you want the variable to take without any restriction on the length of that list. Um, colors can be displayed plain and stippled effect mix so that you get um, with some duplication of when you stipple a color with itself, um, but otherwise 255 <coughs> different um, color effects. Um, serious application, what you can do with them. Um, as I said, there's a local area network built in, hardware and software, cables, everything provided with the QL, and um, you can connect up to 64 QLs with one another. Transfer rate is 100 kiloboard. Um, obviously, you can use the network to have um, printers, disks as slaves on the system, but also simply to transmit information to one another. RS-232, as said before. <laughs> <laughs> and on the keyboard, I should have introduced Jonathan Oakley, um, who works for us in England and helped design the QL. Um, and has written this demonstration program. Okay. Solid state software. And a demo of um, graphics capability. Part of this you'll see is using the circle and ellipse function and the fill function, and I would emphasize again that that has been written in basic. Um, 
Jonathan has carefully selected these colors to be the most attractive. Um, <laughs> but um, I think when it's finished, which it hasn't quite, I'm going to ask Jonathan to enter a command to um, redefine the colors, which, apart from the fact that it looks even worse with different colors, will show you the rate at which it will repaint the screen with, um, with different colors. But it, it hasn't finished <laughs> first time. Is that it? OK. So So repeating the loop with recolor. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Well, so much for the serious stuff. <laughs> um, can I go back to slides, please? <coughs> so with every QL, you get 128K, you get two micro drives, and get all these wonderful things that it can do. You also get four applications programs bundled with the machine. Um, they're not very imaginative. They're spreadsheet, graphics, word processor, database. But they are extremely powerful and extremely easy to use. I think the combination of power and ease of use is way beyond anything on the market. And I'd like very quickly, I have a lot of slides to go through, but I'd like to go through them and show you some of the features of these programs. This is um, word processor. And you'll see that all the programs, sorry? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jonathan was meant to um, impress you all by telling you that I have flown from Tokyo today to be here, and it was going to provide me with an excuse for all the mistakes that I would make. Um, I saw Justify, and I thought, must be word processor. Um, spreadsheet, you'll see that all the programs have the same structure. At the top of the screen, um, there's in the top left-hand corner, it tells you that to get help, at any time, you press F1, first function key. The help function will always give you help that is relevant to what you're doing at the present time. And when you're finished with help, it will return you to exactly the point you were in at your, in your application. Um, prompts F2 simply says that when you press F2, it will get rid of all that stuff at the top of the screen. When you become an expert user of these programs and don't need to be reminded of the commands, um, you can get rid of that by pressing F2. Press F2 again, it brings it back. Top right, commands, F3. It's actually in mode where we've pressed F3 and we've got a list of commands. Um, and it, um, on the command line at the bottom, it will show what you're entering. The red marker is the current cell, which is also identified at the second line from the bottom, tells you the current contents of that cell tells you how much of the memory is um, unused. Um, so here we've moved on a little. We've generated months in the first row. Um, you see now that we're not in the command mode. We're in the mode where you can move the cursor with the four cursor keys to change the cell. Um, you can go to a particular cell. You can enter data and formula. And you can enter text. Now, you'll see that the box that says text, type, quote, followed by text and return, um, down on the command line, we're actually entering sales, quote, S-A-L-S-E-S. -E -S. And because we're entering text, the instruction that we followed that tells us how to enter text has changed color, which is why the text box is in green, where the others were in white. Before we entered the quote mark, they were all in white. So you get this feedback when you're doing what you think you want to be doing. You get the feedback of the change of color. Um, this shows how um, we can generate a whole row of values. Um, we're in this sales row, 
and we're telling it that we want the values in this row to be the sales for January. Sorry if you can't read that, but you can refer to any cell in the spreadsheet by the name of its row and the name of its column, or any part of those names that is sufficient to identify it. And you then ask for those values to be generated, and the machine will prompt you that you would like them from column C, because that is the first column in which it doesn't yet have a value. Um, and you can simply press the Enter key to accept its suggestion, or you can type in something to overwrite it. And then, as you see here, it's suggesting that it, you would like to go to column L, because column L is the last column for which there is a value in the preceding row. All these programs will be available being demonstrated afterwards, and you can, um, I hope, all have a chance to look at them and um, clear up anything that isn't clear from my rather rushed presentation. Um, you can define a new line, as we have done there, profit, and simply say profit equals sales minus costs, sales and costs being two previous rows. Again, the machine will suggest that you should have that from column B, and when you accept that suggestion, it will say two column, whatever that column is that the last value is in. So it, it always makes an intelligent prompt. Um, this just shows that when you go into the command mode and then select one of the commands, in this case for <coughs> units, then in the top center of the screen, it gives you the choices between integer, monetary, decimal, percent, exponent, general, etc. Okay, and you choose which one. It's suggesting decimal. The cursor is on the D of decimal, and if you want something else, you just type in one other letter. If you want decimal, you hit the Enter key and accept the suggested format. Um, this is a default page. Again, you go into Command Mode with F3. You go to Default with D. You then press, in this case, we would have pressed M to select monetary value as the thing we want to change. And um, it will toggle between the pound sign and the dollar sign. And you can change all the other default options there. <coughs> Um, this shows that you can create windows horizontally or vertically. Um, I'm not sure that that actually illustrates any new feature, underlining, double underlining, those sorts of things. Um, That's, um, that shows the actual window commands at the top center. You can join windows, split windows vertically, split them horizontally, as I said before. I'm showing at the bottom there that the current contents of um, Q11, which is the cell we're on identified in red, that the current contents are a formula, which is the sum of the um, elements R11 through M11. And that simply shows that these applications can not only be run in 80 column mode, which is everything we've been looking at on a monitor with four colors, but that they can run in, I think, 64 column mode, 40 on a screen, on a TV screen, and um, you then get the advantage of full eight colors. This is the um, graphics program, and this is the default option that it comes up with, um, which is a bar chart. And um, the vertical white line will be the position of the first number that you enter. And the scale is from 0 to 10, but if you enter numbers which are outside that range, it will automatically adjust the range. When you fill in all the um, segments to the right, it will automatically narrow the segments and allow you to enter more. Um, I think maybe that. Um, you can change the representation from a bar chart, and I think here we've asked for a different sort of bar. Um, we've gone into the command mode with F3, then we've said we want to change the bar. Um, and it shows the different colors of bars. 
white, green, green with white surrounds, everything else. And you can define your own. And you choose one by toggling the, um, the space bar moves that um, rectangle round the bar along the line. When you get to the one you want, you hit the Enter key. And it will redraw the chart um, with different <coughs> colored bars. You can change the color of the background. Um, you can change the color of the lines on the graph paper, um, and so on. This is another example of how you um, change the design. And as you change the design and go through the selection, before you finally made the selection you want and hit the Enter key, that bar that it was showing, we go back, that large green bar on the right, as you step through the colors at the top left, that bar will change to show you exactly what your choice would look like if you confirm that choice by pressing the Enter key. Um, this shows how when you enter more data than will fit horizontally, it simply moves everything along. And all that happens as quickly as you can type it in. Um, this shows how if you enter a few negative numbers, um, it automatically adjusts the horizontal <coughs> axis and puts bars in a different color below the x-axis. Um, change of format, you go into the command mode, you go into the change mode, and you select format number four in this case, I think. Um, if you have entered two sets of data, you can display them both simultaneously. You simply hit the V command for view. It suggests all figures. If you want to see all the sets of data you've got in, then you hit the Enter key, and you get that. You get adjacent bars. You can. If you wish, choose overlapping bars or stacked bars. It gives a key to show which color corresponds to which set of data. You can move that key using the cursor keys. You can move it to another part of the, of the graph paper in the background if you don't like its present position. Um, I think maybe that shows the key box having been moved. Um, you can define costs equals, um, sorry, profits equals sales minus costs, and it will just generate a whole new set of data. And when you ask it to view all figures, it will plot all three on the same graph and again give you a key to indicate which corresponds to which. Um, these are just other examples of formats, and I hope, as I said, that you can have the opportunity to use the program. This is probably the easiest to use in the sense that it's easy to think up things to do with it. And you could generate these sorts of charts that I'm showing here literally within five to 10 minutes of first putting your hands on the machine. And you would not need to look in the instruction book. Simply a different format. and more horizontal bars of various different types. If you go into 40 column mode, you gain a wider choice of color. Pie charts as well, both in four and eight column mode. <coughs> and of course, you can use graphics program um, to, for engineering scientific applications. This is a plot of, I think, six different um, sine functions. There is a full expression evaluator in <coughs> all of the applications in the spreadsheet, the graphics package, etc. cetera, um, so that generating that sort of thing is very simple. Moving very quickly on to the um, word processor, um, you see exactly the same sort of um, commands and prompts available to you. This shows what would happen if at that top level you hit the first function key for help. And it would tell you at the top of um, the help um, menus what Quill, the word processing package, is all about. And if you wanted additional information on commands, delete, escape, glossary, help, 
insert mode, etc. You just press the initial letter and you get more help. When it gets down to the bottom of the help menu and there's nowhere else to go, it says no additional information. You hit the escape key and you get back to exactly where you were before. This shows how you would um, get a directory of um, files on the micro drive and select one to load into the word processor. Um, here's some typical text. Um, you can have bold text, um, which appears in green if the standard text is in white, or vice versa if you've chosen standard in green. Um, you can have underlined text. You can have high script or superscript and low script or subscript. Um, I think there are some examples of that. Sorry, that's a little dark, but it says this is normal text, this is bold, this is high script, and the words high script are slightly above the line, and so on. And you can have any combinations of any of those. To get those, you simply go into the command mode with F3, then you select T for text, and then you um, choose one of three options, bold, underlying, high or low. Cool. Um, that shows how some of them would appear. You've got a usual sort of information, tells you you're in the insert mode, you're currently in bold text, you've got 79 words, you're on eight lines, you're on page one. There are default options for page sizes and so on that you can go into and change very readily. Um, This shows how you can justify, um, again, F3 for commands, J for justify, and then hitting the, um, hitting the cursor key, I think, you can um, have it either left justified, center justified, or left and right justified. And as soon as you choose one of those options, even before you hit the enter key to say, yes, that's what I finally want, as you step through those options and choose them, all the text on the screen will change to show you exactly what your document will look like if you choose that option. Um, you can change the margins, three margins. Um, you can choose the left margin, the indent margin at the beginning of the paragraph, or the right margin. Here we've chosen the right margin as indicated by the fact that the word right is in red in the center top box. The cursor is on the top line, and therefore all lines below that will be adjusted. And as we hit the cursor key to the left or right now, all the text will move left and right on the right margin. And every time you hit that key, even if that's not where you're going to stop, um, everything will change each time that you hit the key when you're satisfied with the position of it, um, you hit the enter key and it fixes it with that margin. This shows the standard format and things like the number of lines per page, the starting page number, the type, color, and so on. All you do for this is go in commands mode with F3, I think D for design, and then if you wanted to change the page size, you just press P that option line will be chosen and you then enter the number of lines you want on a page. <coughs> when you insert text, if you insert one word, then as you enter each letter, all the rest of the text moves along. As soon as you enter a space and start entering more characters, the machine recognizes that you might be entering a block of text and it moves everything down about four lines to give you space to work in without moving everything along and distracting you every time you enter a, a new character. <coughs> These are just other examples of how you would change margins and justify the text. Um, I don't think they add very much to what I've said already. That shows how if you get rid of the prompts at the top of the screen by pressing F2, you have more of the text visible on the screen. And you press F2 again, and it brings back the um, prompts at the top of the screen. Uh, 
Um, you can copy blocks of text. Um, go into the command mode, hit C for copy. You position the cursor with the cursor keys at the beginning of the block. You then move the cursor to the end of the block. Everything is colored with the background as shown there, reversed out. And you then position the cursor where you wish to um, move that block to. And at that point, you have a choice as to whether you wipe out the old copy or whether you leave it there and truly do make a copy rather than move the text. Um, just illustrates tab functions. So these are the beginnings of the database program that I'm not going to go into because it is more a vehicle for the creation of applications programs than an application program in itself. Although if you want to do very simple card index type filing applications, they're very, very simple indeed to set up. Um, there is um, a sample database that comes with the machine um, which has data about various countries in the world, their population, size, etc. And um, you can ask it to find France, and it will look for that text anywhere in the database. You can ask it to um, select all those countries with population greater than 200. Um, you can ask for, for it to select a country which um, satisfies the condition that it's in the continent of Africa and that the language spoken is French. But I, these simple examples don't um, convey the full power of the program, obviously. Between the four bundled programs that you get with the machine, you can move files wherever that makes sense. And you um, create an export file um, from one program, switch into the other program, and read in an import file so that you can take data from spreadsheet to the graphics program and so on, wherever that um, transmission makes any logical sense. OK. Well, I think that's um, enough about the machine, and I'm conscious of the fact that I'm running over time and want to give you an opportunity to ans ask questions. I will just say um, this is a very powerful machine, but it's not aimed at the business market. This machine will sell in the USA later this year for $500, including the software. So we're aiming it very much in the software. So we're aiming it very much at individual consumers who we believe would like to have computers that they can afford that are capable of doing more than simply playing games and running simple educational software. The software that we've provided with the machine is somewhat business-oriented because that's the sort of software that the industry has been providing. But I believe that when hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have QLs, that the software industry will respond to that mass market and will produce appropriate software, serious applications for domestic use. And just to give you some idea of what that might be like, one of the projects that we're working with a software house on now is a home medical diagnosis package. It's based on copyrighted material which is approved for publication by the American Medical Association. And it will tell you when to go to the hospital, and when to take two aspirin. And um, obviously, I think the AMA would not approve its publication if they didn't think that it did the job at least as well as a doctor. It, um, <laughs> <in laughs> And it will do it a lot, lot less expensively. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Yeah. Should we have, thanks. Well, the 68, I mean, it, it, it's a good, I'm sorry. It's the question, the question is, I'll repeat the questions uh, briefly. The question is whether the microprocessor is a 32-bit. Apple, of course, claim that the processor in their Macintosh is 32-bit, and some people insist it's only 16. The fact of the matter is that the Motorola 68000 family is, has a 32-bit internal architecture, and the architecture is the same across the whole family. The different members of the family have different size data buses. The one we're using is the lowest end of the family, the 68008, which has only an 8-bit external data bus. Okay? I don't know where to start. Can you describe the development environment on that machine, on the QL? The question is about the development environment on the QL. I'm sorry, you're asking about the environment that we will provide on the QL for? I, I don't know what's available. For instance, in an assembler. Basic comes with a machine, I assume. Right. What assembler is available and how do you develop programs? As of today, nothing. But um, we will have an assembler, Pascal, C, Fortran. Um, they will all be available. <coughs> either before the end of this year or very early next year. Most of those are coming from a software house, which is a household name in America, but which I'm not permitted to mention at the moment. <laughs> I should mention, incidentally, that the basic machine, as I've described it here tonight, um, was announced in Britain in January, and we began shipments to customers at the end of last month in April. Yes. Megabyte memory edition cost? Um, a price has not been put on that. We have designed it, um, and it's been demonstrated publicly in prototype form. We haven't even yet made a volume commitment to manufacture, but I think um, it's obviously almost completely dependent on memory prices, which are not very stable at the moment. It's probably going to cost almost as much as the machine itself. <coughs> Will the channel distribution be? How will you sell the machine? Channel distribution. Um, we will launch the machine here in the States by mail order advertising in the initially in the computer specialist press. Um, I think that is probably going to sell as many machines as we can provide, um, not only later this year, but the first half of next year. Um, we have a fairly open mind about it. We've thought a great deal about it. We have a number of um, options under consideration. I don't think we're going to compete for shelf space with the computer dealers who in any case would much rather be selling a two and a half thousand dollar machine than a five hundred dollar machine. I don't think either that we want to get mixed up with the um, very low-end home computers. So we're exploring a number of fairly innovative ways of selling, mostly methods of selling direct to the end user. Yeah. Is there going to be any technical documentation available? Technical documentation. The manual is about 400 odd pages. It obviously doesn't go as deeply as a lot of people would wish. Um, the guy who wrote the operating system for the machine, and um, because of the mic drives and so on, he had to be intimately familiar with the hardware. He is now working on writing the QL Bible. Um, which will tell you everything you ever wanted to know about the QL and that only he now knows. <laughs> um, it's going to take some time for that to be written, um, but it's um, certainly a project we aim to complete this year. Yeah. Are you, do you have a terminal emulator program for it? Terminal emulator program. We have a major software house in England um, called SciCon or SkyCon, who um, are a subsidiary of the BP Oil Company, a very large software house, who are writing a VT100, maybe VT200 terminal emulation package and a um, video text package. Yeah. What is the baud rate of the micro drive? The micro drive 
each cartridge contains 100k bytes. Um, it is, I believe, 200 inches long, the tape, and it rotates once every seven seconds. I've been on a plane too long to do the arithmetic. Yeah. Sound capability. Uh, sorry, yes, there is sound capability. Um, can you help me out on that? Would you like to come down and listen to it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The 8049, is that the graphics processor? Are you, are you using that for special purpose? And how fast are you running the general bus? Ugh. The general bus is running at the... The main processor runs at 7.5 megahertz. The 8049 at 11 megahertz. And the 8049 runs the keyboard, um, the sound, and RS-232 receive. But not the graphics. Is that the bus, the 7.5 megahertz bus that will be on the expansion? Yes. On, on the one hand, you're saying that you want to attack the home market, but on the other hand, you have a local area network built into the machine. What's the point of that if you're not going to go into the business market, or are you planning on going to the business market after you've cracked the home market? The local area network got designed into the machine very much because we designed one for the Spectrum computer. It's a very, very low cost. It adds very little extra to the machine. and. Um, it's probably more appropriate to classroom use than to office use. Yeah. Um, I know this operating system is, is very, it's unrealistic, but uh, Unix is being looked at as very popular as far as 68,000. Do you plan to have it adopted or have people anything well, to do? I think Unix is a fairly expensive operating system in a number of ways. Um, I think it's a very good operating system for development work and there are a number of um, potential customers particularly in universities both in Europe and in the States who I think would be very attracted to Unix and um, one product that we're looking at at the moment but have not yet made a firm commitment to is um, an add-on to the machine with hard disk, backup, half megabyte of memory, terminal emulation, and Unix, all in one box. But unfortunately, it's going to make the whole package pretty much the same price as anybody else's with that sort of performance. There are obviously some advantages that we still have in terms of cost. But I don't think that, particularly for a machine of this type, that Unix is an appropriate operating system for running applications. How far do you plan to, pro to progress with the QL as opposed to the ZX81 and the Spectrum? The ZX81 is selling in very small quantities now overseas. Uh, that is outside the UK. We're not selling in the UK anymore. Um, the Spectrum, in March, we sold more Spectrums in the UK than ever before. We sold more overseas than we've ever sold before. There are over 5,000 programs now commercially available in Britain for the Spectrum, and I think it's going to carry on for a long, long time under its own uh, momentum. So the Spectrum will be around for a long time as a predominantly games and um, educational machine. The QL, however, is is the beginning of a line of computers that I think, based as it is on the 68,000, is going to see us into the 1990s. That's what I mean as far as hardware. What other you know, things are you going <coughs> to bring out, flyers or I don't know? Um, we're going to put a display in it one of these days. Um, we will support the QL as a system. Um, we will maintain compatibility with the QL through future products. Yeah. What plans are you making to uh, service this machine in the US? Um, 
we are talking to a number of service organizations. Um, I, I'd be happy to go into more detail, or you could talk to someone in our Boston office about that. But, it, but it's something we've given a lot of thought to. Yes? Uh, two questions. One, can you buy a machine today by going to Britain, I mean, ordering from Britain? And you, can, you can buy a machine in Britain today. Unfortunately, if you place an order, it'll probably take about nine or ten weeks to get it. There's a backlog um, because of, as soon as we announced the machine, um, we were overwhelmed with orders. Um, you could bring it back to the USA and it would work fine with a monitor but not with a TV. Yeah. What about printer output? Are you, working, are you running ASCII for output to a printer? Yeah. Yes. Telecommunications? Any plans for modem program? Um, yeah, as part of the um, video text um, hardware and software module that's being developed, there'll be a modem. Yeah. What about the computer-aided drafting on the software or computer-aided engineering software? Will you be compatible with it? I mean, will you be compatible with those existing stuff with the IBM? Or, uh, or are you going to it? It's a the question's about computer-aided design, computer-aided engineering software, and um, possible compatibility with software that now runs on the PC. Um, it's a field which we of software which we have just started to look at, um, mainly because a lot of people in our own um, labs would like to have that sort of software, and we've just commissioned a consultant who's a specialist in the area to study it for us. So no firm plans at the moment, but it's an area of interest. Yeah. Um, I'm interested why you left off the 10 keypad for calculating. Um, really size um, and um, the, the dimensions of this in this format are dictated by the fact that if the keyboard went over the top of the micro drives, it would be deeper. As you saw from the slide, the internal board only comes up to about here. So in this dimension, it would have been even longer. So there was a design compromise involved um, rather than anything else. But I think that for the market we're aiming at, we can fairly easily live without it. Macintosh can live without it. We can. <laughs> yes? How about the color printer for the nice charts and graphs? Yeah, I've been looking at color printers. One of the problems is that um, when you can produce graphs and charts like that, it's going to be pretty disappointing if you can't um, get them um, printed out. And I was, um, visited the microcomputer show in Tokyo at the end of last week and was looking at some printers there. And I think that um, there are going to be some pretty startling developments in color printers in the next year or so. We've been looking at one or two like the Sakosha and so on and considering whether to do some sort of OEM deal and put our name on one of those printers, but I think things are changing so rapidly that probably for us, it would be better not to commit ourselves until we see what develops. There were some very, very nice color printers there in Tokyo. Questions, please? Yes? When will you have a hard disk available in Falcon? How much will it cost? Um, I'm afraid I can't answer that, that question. Uh, we do plan to have a, at least a hard disk interface. Yes? What about third party software development for the system? Any link ups with the company? Um, we publish a lot of software under our own name that has been written by third parties um, already for our existing machines. And we're very interested in publishing software for the QL. I think virtually all the software houses that have been successful in Europe in writing software for the Spectrum have turned their attention to the QL. Um, and we've got a lot of the early machines in the hands of software houses. And whereas we had no American software houses writing for the Spectrum, we do have several American software houses writing for the QL. Um, so it's a very high priority. But the machine is so powerful that I don't think we're going to see a lot of 
applications appear very, very quickly. I think most of the software houses are intent upon doing something better than simply transferring their existing software from other machines and making use of the particular features of the QL. So I think the, we're not going to see a lot of application software until next year, I would suggest, and probably even 1986 is going to make 1985 look small from that point of view. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned there were two RS-232s on the machine. Is there a parallel port for a printer? There isn't a parallel port, but a parallel port is one of the options that you can plug onto the expansion bus. Yeah. If you really want to uh, crack the home market and sell millions of these, why are you not going to uh, mass retail merchandising? Is it only your production limitations? Do you eventually intend to do that? Um, Well, it's a, it's a fairly complex question of distribution. I will admit to you quite openly that um, we are at Sinclair concerned about the fact that in 1983, major computer manufacturers, low-cost computer manufacturers, who had their products in widespread retail distribution in this country through the mass merchandisers, I'm thinking of Atari, Mattel, Texas Instruments, and Timex, lost a lot of money. And I didn't read too many stories about the mass merchandisers losing hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> it's a very, very dangerous channel of distribution for a manufacturer of a high technology product in which prices may fall. We do not control the price of this product ultimately. If the components that go into this product reduce in price by 50% over the next three years, then we will have to reduce the price of the end product to remain competitive. But reducing the price of a product when a retailer has a few tens of thousands, maybe a couple of hundred thousand units in the distribution pipeline is a very difficult thing to do. He doesn't want to hear that you can't afford to reduce the price of those he's already got because you built them at yesterday's component prices. It's, it's a difficult problem. <coughs> and um, we're just going to keep a very open mind about it. I certainly don't exclude the possibility of us going through those sorts of channels, but a lot of consumer goods in America are not sold through retail stores. You think you've got less risk going through direct mail? Every time you sell to the end user directly, by whatever means, you A, control the price, and B, you control the inventory pipeline, and that's got to be less risky. Yeah. Uh, just three questions on the machine itself. Uh, when you plug something in the side, like the half megabyte RAM, will you be able to plug things on the side of it, on top of it? Or no, what you'll do if you want to have more than one um, peripheral attached in that way is that you will plug on first an expansion box that will then have uh, multiple slots. And you had um, talked about switching files between the programs. Can you, if you had a word processing program you wanted to say note to a chart. Can you take the graph and put it in there? Um, you've got to create the graph, create an export file, <coughs> load the word processor, and then import that file to the word processor. And sound, is it stereo or is it monotone? <laughs> <laughs> If you've got two QLs on the local area network, <laughs> in database and in files, what is the length of line that can be printed out? Um, can be displayed. Well, um, on the screen you've got up to 85 columns. Um, if you want to use a printer, you can configure, um, you can install your printer to have any line length that it actually has actually on the paper. There, yeah. Oh, yes, that's, that's, that's your yeah, you can display 85 columns or a window on 85 columns on the screen, but you can define the line length to be any number of characters you wish. So if you've got a 128 column printer, fine, it will print out 128 characters on a line. But
but you'll only be able to see 85 of those 128 at any one time. Yeah? Can you uh, discuss the price of the uh, micro drives a little bit? Uh, how will they compare with floppy drives? Uh, floppy, the, I'm talking about the media. Uh, at the moment, they're fairly expensive. Um, and I'll confess that there is a deliberate policy to make absolutely certain that we are not embarrassed into having people want to buy more than we're able to supply. Um, if you have a proprietary system, um, nothing will kill it off faster than not being able to supply blank media. Um, but um, production by later this year, in fact by the beginning of the fall, is scheduled to be two million blank cartridges per month. And I think at that time, we'll be looking at a price of around $2.50, $2.50 um, for a blank cartridge at US retail. But don't tell anybody in England that. <laughs> they're, they're paying a lot more. But uh, we are giving people, incidentally, included in the package, I made reference to this cartridge. You get a wallet with the four applications in on four microdrives. You get four blanks so that you can back these up, and you get four additional blanks to use for your own data. So you get three wallets and 12 drives included in the price. Yeah? Uh, I think there might be massive interest on the part of people uh, having this as a home system who uh, have computers at the office right now and want to work on their spreadsheets at home. Is there any, uh, are you allowing, are you, is there, are you predicting that maybe some third party people might be interested in bridging that, uh, that connection there? Yeah. Um, I'm not aware of any activity that's going on in that area yet. Um, and in Europe, generally, um, there isn't the dominance that the IBM PC has in the office here. Um, but I would certainly expect in the US that if we are successful in selling a large number of QLs, that many of them may be used at home by people who have PCs at work and there would certainly be a market for software that would enable you to transfer files between them. Yeah, right at the back. Is the QL compatible with various printers or electric typewriters, or is it a matter of waiting for you to make one? Um, through the RS-232, um, there's that degree of compatibility with typewriters and printers. Yeah. You have two RS-232 ports. Uh, what's the hardware support that you're using to drive those? Is it asynchronous or is it asynchronous and synchronous? And can a program, either an application program, interface to those ports? Jonathan. Um, yeah, an application program can interface the ports very simply. It's a very easy um, device driver to use. Um, the actual hardware um, allows full duplex communication. Um, on both of the serial ports simultaneously. Um, you just have to be very careful about your handshaking requirements on that because, for instance, the second processor is doing the RS-232 receive on both of those ports, so and it obviously can't listen to both of them simultaneously. Both of those ports are Um, they're both, they're both asynchronous, yeah. yeah. You seem to have a very unique product here, you know, vis-a-vis -vis price and capability. Uh, but this is also a very competitive business. Uh, don't you run a risk by adopting this attenuated marketing system of being overcome by another producer and perhaps overwhelmed if they are adopting a mass marketing uh, procedure? Well. We don't have an attenuated marketing system. Um, we are not committed to anything other than launching the product by mail order and probably sticking with mail order as long as we can sell everything we can make. Um, we take the view that we only need to seriously worry about channels of distribution um, when we have the problem that we can make more than we can sell. And I think that's going to occur not until the second half of 1985. Um, <laughs> One every 26. I think we can make half a million this year. Um, 
and I hope that we're going to be able to make a million next year, but um, the constraints on that mainly come from the semiconductor industry. Um, obviously, we've um, gone to great lengths to make ourselves feel secure as far as Motorola are concerned um, with the 68,000. Um, the general memory market is, is a little more worrying. And, um, and that is certainly proving a limitation, um, I think, to most manufacturers now. So, um, but on the other hand, there's enormous capital investment going on in the semiconductor industry, and I think they're moving towards the 256K DRAMs faster than most people thought they would. So um, that may not be limitation. But we're looking for those sorts of volumes. Although it is priced um, higher than the spectrum computer, I think the combination of performance, value for money um, of the machine is such that we expect to sell at least as many as we have sold spectrums. And that's without selling any in the USA. We've sold a million and a half in two years. Yeah. Uh, just one quick question. I was wondering, how exactly does the operating system handle the, uh, uh, the network for us? The network is actually driven um, directly by the processor. Um, whenever you're using the network, it ties up the main processor. <laughs> um, it reads um, directly off the network. Yeah, here. Uh, checks to see if there are any, um, any clashes. Okay, okay, so uh, use individual... Here. Jonathan's anxious that I should wrap things up with just two more questions. Can I suggest that you talk to Jonathan, this Jonathan, afterwards? Right. I now have the invidious task of choosing the last two questions. Yes. When are you going to begin to accept mail orders and when do you expect to, uh, to deliver the first units in the U.S.? Um, as soon as we get FCC approval, um, which I think will be in the fall, um, we will immediately start soliciting orders. And as soon as we get the orders, we'll ship the machines. Yes? Will you take a trade-in on a uh, previous product? <laughs> <laughs> Depends how much you want, Fred. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. have all the real information. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I don't think this is this is where no, we're going to be. No, I don't think so. I hit a skate for it, but now we're, 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 we're coming back out. I'm not sure okay. if I'm sure. Oh, yeah. That's probably a race. We're doing that. Let me let me check something. There we go. You want to? Okay, let's. Uh, wait. Edit. Go for it. Edit. Okay, edit. L to edit labels, K to move the key. Got it. Okay, Ooh, that's okay. the wrong label. That's the sober album. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's Back let's, there, right? Okay, now I've got three. And select edit. Select K to move the key. Okay, now, uh, you can move the box around. And where you set it down is where the key will be. Phew, that is the first time I have seen that done on this screen. Okay? I was reading about that on an airplane. Bob, how you doing? Now let's see if it works. Son of a gun, it even work. We haven't done a pie chart yet. Sort of natural. Notice this stuff has all been sort of stumbled into in the last... We've been at it now about 10 minutes. And I haven't managed to do anything on the keyboard except once hit one of the keys. So the claims that were made a little earlier about being fairly intuitive and fairly in, straight. Okay, I pressed file. No, it's more file, delete, delete file. file. Back up, import, or export. Uh, lift. No. V for view, isn't it? That's, I, want, that's I want to list my files on the disk here somewhere. Uh, it seems to have a... List your files on the disk. And you can see, perhaps if I do a load, it will... Yeah, there we go. Press your mark. Okay, let's see what we got on the disk. Good. Nicely done. Now, it's looking, it's looking on there the, for yeah, this. All that's on this one, then, is the applications program, then? Yes. Now, on here are a bunch of very tedious little files. Uh, the only one of which is an actual uh, graphing file. How do you read this? MDV2 is sort of uh, Sinclair E's for MicroDrive 2 on which are 213 of 225 sector, sectors are still free. I've done two things in the spreadsheet thing, Abacus, which have given a social The one you want is... Uh, who wants to borrow that? Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> You're that fast. Some guy in the red there. Yes, no, yes, you're, you're doing fine. At this point, we should get... What? We get a wait. I know sometimes it tells me that that's the drive, and sometimes it doesn't. Process accessing microdrive, yes, and it eventually gets around to it. I, I'll tell you, on, on a few days use, it's, it's, a, it's a great question to me how this is going to work with hard disk. I mean, just how it, the only the only constriction I can see is, 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 is the little micro cassette stuff. And again, for a home market, who cares? Is there any capability for five and a quarter inch floppies? Uh, not not so far as I know right now, but uh, but with the uh, with the RS two thirty two connection and and you know, general bus it certainly ought to be feasible soon. They fill in the micro drive for the spectrum separately? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea at all. Uh, no problem. I'm not answering questions here. Is anybody else? I, I just assume not play. I think I think a demo, you know, test of something's user friendliness. To, oh, you hit F2. I hit F2, that's right. Which does a very nice thing. It suppresses oh, the... Oh, that's right. The, the nice feature of that is that it, it allows you to, of course, uh, get a bigger, bigger picture. And something I haven't tried yet, but I found out about today... Can you get rid of these status lines on the bottom? That's what I just found out about on the plane. Did that. 
did. Try going back and doing it from the other way, perhaps it'll only. Try to like this. Yeah. Okay, definitely. The the notion in there is that it, it, you would like to suppress this if when you photograph this. And one one of the very few things in the manual is that well you can dump this stuff to an MX80 or you can take a Polaroid picture of it and it goes to some some lengths to get a long long focal length lens to do that. With this kind of color that seems choice by example. Question mark is your friend. Uh, why be smart? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> now, what kind of a background do you want? Uh, if you move the arrows, I said I wasn't going to touch it. Have a, have a go, move an arrow. See what happens. I'm curious what happens when you hit off your question mark there. It doesn't, uh... Just keep rolling until she comes down. Mm -hmm. It's like a little bit. Mm -hmm. I won't hit you. What? I Go for it. Hey, what was the question? <laughs> Long since he's been my program. Well, like, uh, what? Is there a little, a little seven foot piece of tape in there? You want it very high speed? Seven foot? That's all? One, 200 inches is what he said. Oh, 200 inches. I, I had read about it. I thought it was 200 feet. No, 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 no. 200 feet, that's a lot of stuff in there. They're pretty neat. They're pretty and how neat. Fast it, and how fast does it take to go from one Seven end to the other? Seven seconds. From one end to the other? So you go, yo, you went, oh, who did this? My beautiful line You take, and you, as you saw, you can lay a bar chart out here, double bars, and then choose a, a different representation for one of the third data line and lay bars, lines over bars, which is um, pretty, actually, very nice. Very nice. Let's see what happens if you spray edit and uh, T for text. <coughs> text. Put X wires near start of text. Well, why don't you just type in something right now? Yeah. Where you are. Oh, where, where you are. This is the Rocky Mountains. Any old. Excuse me. Yeah. Did you? Were you here for the presentation? No. <laughs> okay. You missed your chance. You almost got it now. Let's let's move this. <laughs> I can't. Volume. I mean, there are people who try to do it. There are people in Korea, in Hong Kong. We've had two successful lawsuits in Hong Kong against people Cotton Spectrums. We're pursuing two people in Brazil, um, one in Korea. You know, why, why does it does happen? But once you get established, it's very difficult to to move. You. Why doesn't somebody write? produce a machine that runs Commodore 64 software. God knows, they're making out like bandits. They've got the whole low end to themselves. If you look at becoming Macintosh compatible at all? No. Although I think what's going to happen is because of the commonality of the processor, a lot of people who write software for Macintosh will see the opportunity to fairly readily convert it to run. That's a possibility. So, you know, we're all in favor of Macintosh. Yeah, Ma Macintosh Mal proves that you don't have to be IBM compatible if it succeeds, and we're also in favor of it because it's 68,000 based, and we have the software houses moving in that direction. Do you have a mouse interface for it now? No. Yeah, yeah, but you're going to be programming this at C and Fortran. High level language going to run on your operating system. So once you have that, it, and sure. stuff is written in C and Fortran. Yeah. A lot of Macintosh is written in C. All this software was written in C. A lot of the Macintosh is written in C. It was all written in C, developed on Vance. And this is a company. What I was going to ask you is what did you use to develop it? We didn't. The software that you've seen there, the four bundle packages, weren't developed by Sinclair, they were developed by the software house in Britain. And they did it on Vance? And they did it on Vance. Um, we did our own development in house on the back source of the house. Can I ask you this? Uh, the, the impediment you just described is somebody coming in and copying the machine. Why wouldn't that oh, also uh, here's, here's pro ruling, uh, prevent people from producing PC clones? Things like that for IBM. I mean, they're too well. They obviously have tremendous confidence to come in. People are producing PC clones. Huh? Excuse me? Yes, they I realize that. My question is if they're producing the PC clones, why, why would you prevent them from producing?
I think it's the, it's the price structure. I don't think we, it's the micro drives and things like that, but it is also the price structure. We don't create an umbrella for people to see an opportunity to come in and make money. If I'm in Taiwan, I can see ways to make an IBM clone and make money. Sell it less for IBM and still make a lot of money. But shoot, who wants to make one of those and sell them for $400? So it really is your and you've got to get that application software as well. I mean, there really is probably you know, 20, 30 man years of effort in that application software. And we get that software at a ludicrously low price because of the volume we can deliver. The company that's developed that software, we bought over a million pieces of software from them in 1983 for the Spectrum. So they have confidence in our ability to deliver volume, and so they give us a very, very good royalty deal. But if somebody else goes to them and says, will you provide this software for my machine, A, they're going to say no because we're contractually forbidden from doing so, and B, even if we did, it would cost you $100 per machine. Couldn't somebody develop a machine that would run that software Where are you going to get that software from then? See, we're not protecting it at the moment because we're giving it to everybody. So we're not protecting it. But if anybody had, had any use for it, we'd start protecting it from one way or another. You know, I mean, physically making it difficult to copy. Well, I know you've it. Oh, we put it in, we put it in the wrong car. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. You really was an excellent. I've watched a lot of these presentations, and this one, something always goes wrong usually with them, and you can't see this or you can't see that. And the slides don't work. You really have it now. Thank you very, very much. Dave, you have a secret show. Thank you so much. I said when I arrived here earlier, I only flew in this afternoon because I arrived and met John and I felt like I'd come to perform a moment of it. I never used to see it. That was a custom pilot. Probably. Thank you very much indeed. Congratulations on your product. Thanks for coming. It's exciting to be here. Okay. I'll see what you're doing. I've got a belt and tool. Thanks. Learn to graphics, like the picture he had up there, the literature he had up missing, because my the pinstripe sitting there is demonstrating. Yeah. On the, um, the disk, does it read it continuously or does it have to make a couple of passes? It reads it, it reads it, it's, it's, a one, it's unidirectional. Jonathan may kill me for saying it, I'm not sure if it's true. The current operating system, uh, when it's loading, it misses a sector and it waits it comes around for the second time. But the, the production operating system does it, it buffers them all up. And you can tell that it's different. Sometimes you'll load something and it doesn't burn up. No, I thought it was a lot of If you do F2, you'll get the top back again. If you're writing for publication, most stuff that's printed is printed in black and white. The color is so more care. expensive. That's so right. If you're doing graphics, you might care. Why not? Yes and no, but still, you, know, you add a lot to the cost of the publication if you go for good color. So, uh, how, in terms of these various modes of portraying data, how well does it work out? It works out well. I've been doing it. Well. It's nicer to look at the screen. Tim, does the, soft, the software uh, run in 40 columns as well? Or not? Yeah, it does. In fact, you can do that. That's right. So, I mean, the point is you could run the software off of a TV. You just even include oh, the spreadsheets yeah, yeah. in the word process. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Does it have a built-in audio monitor? Uh, no, it's a UHF. Oh, okay. Oh, the one we've been running has been 35 and more. I don't know why it's 35. <laughs> Presumably, it would be switchable between two channels anyway, right? What did you have there? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of this and go to the work process here and know how to do this. I have had one client with my entire history since for a few days. Uh, she'd ask, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Tim, are you, are, are you and Jack working full time, or is this a, a consulting contract? Or what's your rate? This, this is a consulting contract. Oh, I see what he's doing here. <laughs> The only thing I know about the sound is the transportation. Sorry, we'll have to go to the work. Excuse me. Remember 15 feet left? For some people, Sinclair has a reputation for IBM PC basically in the sense of uh, take colors between. Yeah, it takes colors between the things. The online comment character, I think, is a. Exclamation is right now. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's like your name still. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll fix it up. I want to get the text out. Stay right where you are. If you start loading, you yeah. got the name of your file, which I've done a lot recently. Yeah, because they're going to be breaking down. Question mark. Mm -hmm. Give you the give you what's on the file. This happens to be what's on my that that cartridge drive. About half full. And these are a couple of large word processing documents. These are all the database documents, the program. Uh, and this is the proposal. That one. Put on the ground if it'll reach. The database part looks really, to me, it looks really powerful. Uh, you can do uh, things with it that you can't do with a lot of other data. You can have as many files as you want, connect them any way you want. The thing is, you have to write procedures to do that. You have to say, you have to hook those things up. Basic. The interface for the graphics package is very different. If you want to pick which kind of graphic format you do, you, they give you a little example. They draw a three little pictures of the graphics. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. They don't do that. But aside from that, the F1 always means help. It always means get rid of the top of the screen. It always means command. Um, escape always gets you out of it. So, so once you've learned them, you never get piled up by just doing the same thing again in some other package. It may not get you exactly all the way you want to go, but it's not going to ruin you. Sure, absolutely. You might get it. It's like a method page. Tim. How are you doing? Okay. What do you think? Can we need a machine? Yeah. How about this? I'll do a newsletter. I'll do a little bit. Thank you. Just a little bit. Okay. Thanks. The graphics and the spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, it's really neat. What the, I didn't understand the database. It's sort of an environment for database. Well, he said it's an environment for making applications. And I don't know entirely agree with that, but I like to write little programs. If you yeah. like to write little programs, it's terrific. Yeah. Because you can do things with it fairly simply that you can't do with a lot of other databases. Yeah. But if you like, if you like, uh, PFS file where you, you get led through it and pan, you know, someone grabs your hand and says, now do this, now do this, now do this. Not that kind of thing at all. But do you write them in, um, in uh, basic or do you write them uh, in uh, It's a basic like language. It uses some things that are unique to the database. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a nice one too, it lets you, it's very easy, for example, to link as many files as you want to get. And you can set up a whole form, you can input to a form where you input to, 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 to the, uh, 
even I uh, to, to, to a screen, then you can say, okay, if that field is this, then go ahead and look at this database file for this name and just get out of the screen. So you can do anything you want to do, essentially. You have complete control over each one of the records in each of the files. Oh, okay. So you can draw something from one database, something from another thing, and then the thing that is a document? Thing, no, you can't create a thing which is a form on the screen. Oh, or you could make a document out of it. You can do anything you want. You have control over oh, what thing you hear as well. Yeah. You don't have to use screen forms, but if you do, it's convenient. Yeah. Like if you want to address a letter to somebody, and you know he's got a thing on your whole deck, so you can grab it from the whole Yeah. 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 Then you hit the E. You do T and then E. Then S. You move lift the S. Uh, things are getting really lost up. Oh, we're losing the E, actually. Okay. okay. Just have to, just have to keep your fingers popping. So this means it has two feet or lower? It has, yeah, it has. It'll, uh, it'll take a second key, but not a third. If you have three keys down simultaneously, it's going to lose the middle letter. Middle oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so when you release them, you'll get the last one. You get the first and the last. You hold down, you hold down when you get it. Yeah. You hold down a second letter, and it won't press the second until the first one gets released. But if you then press down a third, okay, the second one disappears. Oh. Anyway, yeah, it will okay. we'll give you where the page breaks are going to be. The only way to do it, as far as I know, is to find those page breaks. I don't see why they make the key these shapes. I mean, I keep feeling that I'm, I'm going off the key, you know, and it's, it's still registered. As long as you catch the edge of the key anywhere, all of these come out of work. It just feels so funny having this tiny round thing. You just wonder why they just didn't make a big dish. It doesn't look like there's much more space. I mean, why the big gaps between the keys? It's the same character. Because it's all been in the That's it for us. We didn't say it. You've got a word link too, right? That's a There it is. Don't worry about your deep, just keep going. <coughs> so apparently there is some non justify Did you recover those words you just deleted? Yeah, it didn't non justify now. Is there a way of getting that back, like undoing the delete? I could put uh, five or six of these in my shop and use them as inputs to uh, you know, Sometimes what, what just happened? She went into insert, so it gave her space. She's more than that. No, she had a space, so it did. Have you heard the latest rumors? No, all right. Are we running out of tape? Look in the window. Does it say tape in? Or something else? What happens if you go down and try typing? Just go down one line. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. It closes everything up. Did you hit one up? Yes, you did. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go there. All the packages are right. Where's the insert? Oh, you said. Oh, yes. Thanks. And the next character drops. And then if I move, now I don't know if I'm down. The march and the march is a little bit close up to the block open. Interesting algorithm, for instance. Oh, it is stuck. Okay. Control back. Yes, I am. Hello. I'm fine. I'm exhausted. Other than that, I'm fine. I get up at 6 in New York. Red light go on. Oh, let me done. You see the red light? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now push it again until you get it. I'll take one out. When I'm done with the quill, we'll do a little bit of work, the work fast, process first. Fast. And then we'll uh, take that out and we'll put it in the archive and share that. You can copy from one to the other. You can copy from one to the other. Would you be able to put um, several ones same, simultaneously same when we get the memory seven, expansion? Seven different, different programs at the same time? Yeah, so that you yeah. could interchange. <coughs> When the screen comes up, it, this is just the picture that he showed. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a file that I've already got there. And um, <laughs> the, the file happens to be called prop. Let's, let's uh, I'll show you directly. These arrows, there's no backspace key. The backspace is a control left arrow. Um, okay, so and, these, and you can edit as you go. That, that one is, but you don't have to do that. Here, if I, if I type all this stuff, I don't mean to do that. I can backspace and then delete those arrows that way, forward, or I can just move back and forth. In, 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 in. Now, it assumes that the data is all on this drive, which it is in this case. The word here is underscored, and in fact, if you look at the type case, you find that it's underscored. As you go down, this indicates what, what the character is. So these are all normal characters. This word, scope, is in bold. There's also a superscript and a subscript. I don't know if I have it. Do you have an expand function? And expand. Uh, I expanded the text. I think we expanded the text. Double width text. No, no. But you can change the format number. number. Question mark yeah. allows yeah. joint play. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted to look at some other possibilities. Yeah. So I can get the satisfaction through there. <laughs> Probably even call the office in Boston. This thing. Give you the Remember, this is for a home. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, you wanted to try some different. Oh, really? Thing. Well, here are some of the. I forget which way ran. Yeah. Oh, yes. Likewise. Yeah, great set. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should have a good indication on that place somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Two questions. One, I have about 100 five and quarter inch floppies. I would like a way to communicate between another machine and five and quarter inch floppies. Tell me where we're going to be able to do that. Um, I'm, although we would. We want you to believe that micro drive is just as good as a floppy, as you say, there are lots of people out there with floppies already. Yeah. And I'm sure that somebody's gonna build a, some third party's gonna yeah. build a floppy into this. Into which port? Into the expansion box, I would guess. Could do it through the RS232, I think. No, very slow. Yeah. But if you only wanted to transfer stuff 
once and for all, might be, but probably through the expansion bus. Micro, micro drive. Micro drive. I mean, compared to a disk, we're floppy. So data transfer rates. Well, not the data transfer, but I mean, you know, file yeah. access. Yeah. It's somewhat slow. I mean, that, I was saying the only thing that could limit, and once your production catches up with your sales, distribution problem, uh, once you can produce one of those, so, uh, it seems like what would limit you is the speed at access. Speed. Uh, I mean, just because the technology is going to couple of years ah, people will be but all, but all the with all it. the increases that you've seen in technology for discs in magnetic media will apply and can, can be applied equally well to to the micro drive. I mean 100 k capacity with seven second cycle time isn't the limit. There are various techniques of thin film recording heads, vertical recording and so on that will give you... third party, if nothing else, will do that. No, we'll do that. We'll do that. We're not going to be selling a machine in 1990 that has 100k capacity on the cartridge. No. It'll be a megabyte the other, the other one is the compatibility. The software for the local NF board? No, we don't. So it's just, right now it's not, it's not working, it's just a connector. Um, I mean, there are commands in the basic which to exercise the local area network. Oh, so you can, when it comes out of the box, hook up more than one QL. You yeah, you've got the leads are provided. You can hook them up and start sending stuff to and from machines right away, yeah. And that's part of the terminal emily, to part of the communication program? Plug into the, uh, one of the ports. Yeah. No problem. Um, could we talk to you please about acquiring the Boolean version of QL that tennis appropriate? Um, really, you, you should address yourself to our Boston office here in the States, but um, we recognize that eventually we're going to want to do OEM business and the time to start working on OEM business is sooner rather than later, not when you, as it were, need the business. Um, but um, yeah, I'm afraid you're not going to get a very positive response at the moment. Um, we are just formulating an OEM policy in Britain and we're negotiating one agreement with one company. Um, to do an OEM product, um, or at least to offer a product to OEMs. Um, but um, it'd be foolish for me to pretend that we're going to have product available before the second half of next year. And uh, are you supporting any particular laser printers? No. No, we're not at the moment. Okay, so, so there's no problem with that. You know, writing, writing software for no. that purpose. No. You said there was a cartridge slot, though. Does that accept that, any existing cartridges? Or no, it doesn't. It would no. Be for no. no, they would be proprietary yeah. shaped cartridges. But we'd make that design freely available for anyone to use. But the interface, would the interface be available also? So if someone wanted to interface a disk driven to the cartridge slot, could you do that? Take the no. cartridge out? No, it has to be clear. No, he's, I think he's asking. He's expansion. asking about the expansion bus. Yeah. So it has to be go through the expansion bus. Yeah. Yeah. Will that be made public then? The expansion bus will not or will? Well, I mean, the expansion bus exists there. You mean if information about yeah, it will? No, yeah, so absolutely. So okay, that's how you design it. It's all going to be in the QL okay. library. It's going to be okay. utterly and completely okay. yeah. in every way. Do you expect that before the end of the year? I hope so. It's a big job yeah. to write that, though. Do you have a price? So <laughs> far? None at all. But we're not. I mean, the objective is to cover cover our costs and to make sure that anybody who wants one can afford it. It's crazy to have people who want that sort of information not be able to afford it. So it's it's not going to be outrageously expensive. Will black white monitor provide different resolutions? Different grey ones. Same resolution, but they just produce grey ones. Any monitor will work with this? Uh, RGB. RGB. Any? Well, any RGB. Yeah. Any like come that. Uh, MDAC RGB or whatever. We obviously haven't um, checked it out on a wide range of monitors available in the USA. So those are your monitors then that you want to show um, Those are monitors that we picked up here in Boston and a couple of them required a mod to be put on the QL. But you can be sure that any QLs that we sell here in the States will be compatible with okay. monitors sold in the States. Obviously you're only using 60 seconds. That's not a problem. No. Set of programs open as in the sense that DBase files are open, so that you you can go into that file with a program of your own. 
I think so, but I'd have to ask, suggest you ask Jonathan because I don't know, but I'm pretty sure you can, yes. Will there be memory expansion less than half a meg? Um, there's no plan at the moment. So we'll go for 128. Would be to 640. Yeah, 640. So you end up with a half a meg? No, to 640. You end up with 640. Yeah. That presumably uses the 256K RAMs. It uses right. either 64 or 256. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. So does that mean that the internal RAM is also designed so that you could pull out the 64K yep. RAMs and plug in 256? Yep. So potentially you could have the expansion all plus inside. Oh, no, huh? no, the, the no, you couldn't do the whole thing 256 all the way through because the total address range of the 68,008 is only one megabyte. And you've got to take the ROM out of okay. that. So you can't just multiply it all up by four and say you can have two megabytes. Yeah. Two and a quarter, whatever, um, two and a half. It's only about the size of the... Of the so is there any way you can tell it's still running? Or is it just yeah, there's a little light that's on there. There's nothing on the screen that tells it's still running, except that what will happen is you just, you'll get a new prompt. That little bracket is a new prompt. There we are. Okay. Now we can go through and get the next by, by population. You'll see they get increasingly larger. You can with this with this system do everything you can with normal file card databases. You can say, uh, find me the first where, where this occurs, where the find me the first country in Europe, find me the first country in Europe where the population is greater than 500. Um, you can say a nice thing. You can take this, take the 152 records and say, I really only want to deal with those in Europe. So select me only those in Europe, and it'll restrict the set that you deal with to just those in Europe. Then you can say, oh, I didn't mean those. I really meant the ones in Eastern Europe. And select it and receive it again. For instance, right now you're seeing one record at a time. Let's say you want to list all the European countries and write a report with four columns. Can, does this have a report? It does, and the way it works is you do you develop procedures. Uh, well, I will show you one. Uh, let me let me show a couple of other things. Then we'll get to the procedures. If uh, where'd you get the house to help outside? Really, literally. Is it another database? He's probably going to use that again now. Yeah. I'm going to load a screen that's a, a different image. All right, this is this is the same database but a different presentation of it. There's a little screen editor that lets you define screens and put fields on it. This one is exactly the same. And yeah, same data, same everything works just the same. All we've done is change the presentation. And I have another one. And these are all loaded on, are all saved on this on the micro drive. Oh. This is exactly the same well, screen except that down here it says this report prepared for. And you'll see that it's blank. <laughs> In a different color, you can change the colors on the screen, and uh, you can. It's like a, parts of it are like a like a language, so I can define me as I'm Tim. And now. Now, if there's nothing in the drive, you could have one. You're now in. Yeah, you're now in, uh, in. In a fairly powerful basic. The, the, the basic right now. Yes. It is, the basic. Is, uh, is the basic similar to any standard basic? Basic is a very good basic. I, I wrote my first basic program in uh, September of 1965. 
13 months, 14 months after basic was invented, and I've seen a lot of basics. Is it, is it similar? It's a very, if you knew Microsoft basic program, it's, it's a very solid, uh, let, me, let me do this again. Let's see. Come on. Um, there's some rules here. You can boot any of these things. I could have demonstrated that by uh, saying L run, which is a load and run, uh, M MDV1 underscore BOOT, which is the bootstrap on all the disks, and, and by and by you get you get the uh, thing. Actually, it's kind of fun to look at with a top on. It's a very cute. Let me see what we got here. I'm putting this in the wrong places. Okay, the Abacus is a spreadsheet. Okay, we're looking at the spreadsheet portion of it. Uh, my partner over there is showing off word processing and uh, database stuff. If that's your low of your life, then you probably want to slip that. So I mean, it'd be very simple to put in a, an offer. It's a sort of toolkit type ROM, um, which is when I set them to come out. Um, that's the only thing that has always has annoyed me, that some of the things which can easily be done, people can't be bothered to do. Maybe the absence of a screen, full screen editor. Mm. The fact that somebody has actually written us um, a sort of prototype full screen editor, and it just hasn't had time. We haven't had time to put it in properly. But again, it will be easy to interface later. What's in the ROM? In the ROM, um, that's the sort of sum of the operating system basic. And I don't know exactly what's in it. It's just that the ROM has grown to 48k because in the UK they're being shipped with the ROMs outside as well. <laughs> right. Um, what we've said is people. Um, we feel you'd rather have the machine in the current state than no machine at all. Um, so we're shipping you with the ROM outside. Um, later on you'll be able to send it back and we'll put the ROMs inside for you and ty tidy it up. Yeah. <laughs> people have been waiting quite a long time because it was launched in January and only delivered. The end what, about doing, what about doing something about getting one of these things? If uh, you wanted to, to put it in, get on a mailing list, so you'd be sure to get an order form whenever they come out and all that kind of thing. Um, we have a, an office here in Boston. Um, now I don't have the number for that. Like offhand, I can't well, see good. Maggie yeah. or Mary. Did you just call them up. And yeah, I mean, uh, I've been sort of sitting there fixing these machines up, sort of making certain they're all just just right. And you know, I've been listening to people receiving phone calls from from all over the states. Apparently, Midwest. A lot of people have been phoning from the Midwest today for some reason. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean they get their name and address taken, put down on the mailing list um, for brochures being mailed out um, sometime in June, apparently. Are you treating yeah. software as well differently? Um, I don't know if it's that one. I mean, if, if it's only going to get sent to people in June, then uh, it presumably isn't that one, because it's still at the printers, but it could be that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, you, but these won't actually be available physically in hand probably until the fall. Is that what you're... That's what the that's, prediction that's is? That's what I hear, yeah. I mean, like November, um, October, June. December, what? November. November. It depends uh -huh. on how well the development of the NTSC chip is. Uh -huh. um, there's, say, there's the the custom logic array has to be um, changed around a bit to generate the, the video signals. Um, I don't know. Um, I think it is quite difficult to achieve sometimes. Certainly. They do. They listen for the noisiness of the Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we had a lot of difficulty getting something very similar to FCC the Spectrum. I think the uh, in Sweden they have very similar regulations. We had a lot of trouble getting that approval. I think this is inherently a less noisy machine, but um, let's see, I don't know what difficulties might crop up, so it's yeah. very difficult to tell. I'm curious, will the, will the US machine have a future? Um, I don't know, it'll, it'll be the, whatever's the most common mode for current, current use. I've heard what users of the older ZX81 computers say that the, uh, the UHF modulator for, for purposes of using a commercial television set gave a better picture because you could you know, stand I imagine somewhat we'll better bandwidth and less interference from the broadcast. I imagine we'll use whatever system gives the best quality and when something of that resolution you need absolutely the best quality you can get. Um, I'm not an expert on television systems really.